All right, hey everybody, this is Nelson Neverheart. Uh, I was in the middle of a project, just looking at this old Marleybone 5 track and doing a little bit of uh, resurrecting it from the dead. I recorded these files originally on a piece of software called Digital Performer, and now I use Pro Tools, and all my sounds and new sounds are on Pro Tools. So I got halfway into this project and thought that maybe I should record it and see if it's interesting to anybody. I have a feeling it's gonna be just a big old ramble uh but sometimes i use youtube to just sort of put on in the background while i'm falling asleep so if you're falling asleep that's fine uh i got lots of students that do that doesn't bother me none um so the first process is getting it out of dp uh exporting a midi file and then opening that up in pro tools and trying to remember what sounds i used that's pretty tough i'm doing here is my mix window some of the sounds that i had were in the contact library i used contact three back then it's now on contact seven uh and i'm i also used a library called well a couple libraries called uh, east west symphonic orchestra silver complete and east west raw for the world sounds uh for marley bone i don't think there's a whole lot of world sounds it's mostly from the Symphonic orchestra, I'm using a um, solo cello and a solo violin from that library. And those are still, those still mostly hold up. I will replace some of these sounds going forward if I don't think they're up to snuff or I think I have some uh, better ones going on. And then I also have UVA workstation for a library called uh, MSI Motu Symphonic Orchestra, which is where some of my sounds came from. Some of them are easy to just replace. And then there are sounds that are just very uh, iconic. They worked in a very particular way. It is a lot of work making the same MIDI work for different sounds. Like if you have a clarinet patch from 15 years ago, say, compared to a clarinet patch from today, the way it's programmed is going to be different. The way you perform it is different. So I've got most of the keyboard percussion up here, the harp, the strings, and the woodwinds. I'm on the contrabassoon. And for the contrabassoon, I know I'm gonna update that with the new Cine samples. I'm sure you're shocked. Contrabassoon, uh, the difference between the articulation and the true legato patches in the Cine samples library are true legato is just nice and the notes just connect really well. The articulations also let you play uh, staccato notes if you let up on the sustain pedal. I think there might be some staccato patches, so let's do that. I turn the reverb off because I'm gonna reverb them all together as a group. And then the articulation speed goes up, the, the legato speed between note and the other. If the default kind of sets it really bold, like it's kind of a slow legato usually too slow for most of the stuff and then i have to set it to the midi channel where that stuff is let's solo this see what we got pretty awesome whoa <laughs> so the contrabassoon goes down pretty low different uh sound patches will have them in different uh octave ranges on the keyboard I think some of them, some library manufacturers program for convenience, like it's kind of centralized on the keyboard because if you're actually playing where it is, you know, in pitch, that you'd be playing, you'd be reaching way to your left on a keyboard to try and play that part. Um, and then as I referenced before, these patches are programmed differently. So I have to go to a lot of these Cine sample ones and specify whether I want them to be sustained or staccato. Those are all sustained. Let's see. So that line there, do, 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 is a little particular. Mm -hmm, uh -uh. I think that last note should probably be staccato. I like that, but this sustain note is stepping on the staccato part. Kind of have to get your embouchure and your tongue sort of reset. Da, 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 da. Yeah, 
Yep, better. This guy over here should be sustain. Something else that didn't happen um, well with my libraries back in the day anyway is that the mod wheel wasn't used for dynamics. So in the new world, in the new world of my sound libraries anyway, as I move the mod wheel, there we go. So here's the mod wheel as I move it. plays at different dynamic levels, which is which is really nice. I find it to be a great expressive way to get it to ha to get the dynamics through, but obviously none of that is in this MIDI. So I'll either have to recreate it or decide that it doesn't it doesn't need it. Oh. <laughs> I just changed the mod wheel. Instead of the uh Sustain. I'm using a Logitech like thumb wheel mouse and it's a pain. And now that I've moved the um, now that I've moved the mod wheel, it's playing it playing it kind of loud. So I will probably have to go in and fix that. Ooh, like that. The other nice thing about the the CineSample library, what isn't nice about the CineSample libraries, um, is that even though it's staccato, it's programmed very inventively. Uh, because the lighter you hit the key, the shorter the staccato note is. And then when you hit it harder, we get a longer. It's still kind of separated, but not as um, geeky short as my high school music teacher would have said. So even sometimes when the notes need to be a little bit longer, but they still have a little bit of separation between them, you can pull that off with the sustain pedal down and in staccato mode. I think that probably works. These are super sustain notes. Let's make sure they are thusly. Check out the, this is the tempo dramatically increasing. So I went back and I'm now remember these files are uh, from 2007, probably. I couldn't find the original Marleybone 5, but this is this is one of the demos that I wrote f uh, to get to be able to do the score for the game. And it, I don't think it's the final version of the MIDI file. So it actually has some weirdness here. And then there's more kind of the, the idea graveyard is back there. So I'm going to leave that for now, continue finding sounds. So four trumpet and four bones, I know those are from the uh, East West Quantum Leap Symphonic Orchestra uh, Library. I don't know, man, I don't, think that's, I don't think that's my best trumpet sounds anymore, but let's give it a go. Did I say four trumpets? Where are there only two trumpets here? Is it possible that's not the library it's from? Uh, certainly it's possible. Er, the other library I used was the Contact Factory library, which has sounds. Nope, just trumpet ensemble and trumpet. So it's possible I just labeled the track wrong and it's really the two trumpets patch from East West. Let's two trumpets. Question is, 
is it sustained or is it staccato parts? Oh, here is a, here's a clue. So this will be interesting. I don't know, maybe. Notice that here's kind of the regular range of the trumpet here. And then below that, we see these little notes all the way down at like C0. We down here. Um, these are key switches, which means that this patch itself from the lab, the East West library had different articulations built into the patch that you could switch between by hitting different low keys that are out of the range of the instrument. So that means that I was using a key switch. We'll add that into the fray. They changed. Well, <laughs> East West is using a new engine. I'm supposed to be using a new engine called Opus, but I, I had some problems with it and I just kind of am lazy, stuck back here in the, the play engine world. And for some reason it's assigning new patches in here all to the same uh, MIDI channel, which means I always have to tweak that. There's probably a preference setting I can get out of that with, but all right, let's see how that sounds. Four trumpets, that's on the play and that's in the end next unused slot. Let's see if this sounds like what we expected to sound like. Wow. Heraldy trumpets. God. Yeah, I'll probably replace those or at least add um, another layer onto that. Four bones patch. You could probably guess it's from the same location. This one actually is named properly. I see some uh, low MIDI notes down there too, so that's probably the key. Also the key switch. Add it in, change it from Omni to the next unused channel. Assign that MIDI channel to play four. And then turn the... <laughs> Contrabassines do not play that loud, so that guy is that guy is using some air. Huh. Okay, so this the problem with this guy is that horns parp was a sound. That's what I called it. That's not what they called it. It was a uh, it's a patch from uh, Project Sam. Kind of before I got Symphobia, they had an orchestral brass classic library and that's one of the only sounds i think uh held up and so having that whole library installed just for that patch felt a little wasteful to me so i'm going to go wow so there's a lot of there's at least three notes playing over here so i'm going to do two horn ensemble articulations because they're supposed to be nice and short let's turn off the preset let's make sure that it's playing poly mode otherwise it will only play one note at a time and i'm going to Shouldn't have to worry about speeding up the uh, legato because I don't think there is any legato on this patch. Uh, let's assign that to our... There. And let's unmute it, see what it sounds like. <laughs> so what I'm doing there, I think I am... So I'm backing up uh, some of these sounds. These sounds are kind of mushy. They're the reasons that I didn't really want to use them again. It's just because the the attack of them. And, and a lot of brass libraries back in the day did this. It was boah, 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 boah. They didn't really speak as soon as you hit it. And brass players, one of the ways they can articulate is da, 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 where it speaks really, really early and really aggressively. These guys weren't. Uh, by themselves, the bones and the trumpets weren't speaking quickly enough for me, apparently. And I wanted to kind of strengthen that articulation, so I put these in. But this different sound isn't quite uh, hitting the same. So instead of that sound, I'm going to use uh, from Symphobia, the brass section 
short notes. So instead of, uh, I can still use the horns. So let's put it in under there. Take off of the reverb. This is gonna sound pretty dry. And I'm using staccato extra short. Let's see if that uh, sounds better. Yeah, it's popping. And then there's also something I did back something I did back in the day was to use like a horn patch that went low enough. I think technically it's still in range of the horn, but nobody writes for it, at least if you're trying to get a note to sort of speak. So these like lower uh, trombone uh, tuba notes. Yeah, you'd have a, a trombone do that kind of bass part instead of the instead of the horn patch. But if the horn patch, you know, sounded okay doing it, I would go ahead and do it. That means that this horn, I can move this back to uh, channel five, which is where I've got those uh, two horns ensemble articulations. It's possible that I could get away with the uh, legato patch because most of these look like they're legato y, but let's listen. Okay. So where these were the short notes, the scatter notes, these are the long notes. That's kind of interesting. Interesting approach, younger Nelson. Uh, let's go to sustain then and try and make these longer notes. You see why it takes me so long to do any of these remix videos and see why the album took so long. So I think these are, this is low. Unless it's trying to back up the bones. Let's try them all together because it doesn't matter what they sound like by themselves. There we go. That sounds like a brass part. And then I've got a horn solo here for some reason. Uh, is there any parts on it? Yes. So let's go up to the... So go up to that. I'm looking at the parts, trying to find out what kind of updated uh, sound I need to use. The fact that it's polyphonic here might change things, uh, but the once again, the Cine Brass has a wonderful horn solo, but only in true legato. Horn solo articulations. Uh, Cine Samples they might still do this, I don't think so. Their core library had like 95% of what you could possibly ever want, but there was some stuff missing in some either uh, rarer articulations or lesser used instruments like Cine Winds chord and have an E flat um, alto clarinet or, a, or the contrabassoon. And you would upgrade to the pro patch and that added some other stuff that, that added the kind of rare stuff that you might need. Turn off the reverb and we're definitely gonna to need to use it in poly mode. Let's, I usually like when the horn's got, a, the, the legato speed is a little bit slower. And put that on patch seven. Is this boring yet? Comment down below. patch. Let's listen to horn solo by itself. So cool, but we need some sustain. Might want to uh, switch some of those to staccato notes just because they are as long as you hold the key down in legato mode. So right there, it's obviously not gonna need to be da, 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 da. So long, short, short, long. Yep. And then we got the same kind of thing over here. 
Da, 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 da. Probably going to need a little bit of the mod wheel to kind of build it, build up the dynamics through that line. But let's keep going. Uh, I'll tell you what, the East West Library had a really good tuba, and I've tried replacing it, and it just takes it takes a lot of work to get it there. So let's see if we can get that. I always think that says STFU. Channel five on play. Yeah. Now notice that the key switches for the tuba because the tuba is natural. Because the tuba's pitches are way down here. There's not enough room to pop key switches down here. So for the tuba, the key switches are up high. So it's it's not very standardized. Yep, I like that. All right, next track is the chimes. This would have also been east-west. Um, I think it's possible they might have been. It's possible that they were a contact uh, factory library. Not five, six. And then for some reason, this engine is really, really loud. So much louder than the other guys. So I gotta make sure that that's turned down. Um, play six. Um, you may wonder why I split the contact MIDI into multiple uh, families. So like I have contact, uh, contact strings I have one instance of contact for the strings, one instance of contact for the winds, one on, one instance of contact for percussion. And I do that because I usually send them to the reverb at slightly different uh, levels. Let's me get a slightly different sound and a little more realistic uh, orchestral section sound. Where am I? Chimes, here we go. Play chimes, volume down. Whoa. So how you know that I've uh, I was working on this track is that there's volume automation. So when I hit play, the uh, fader jumps here. So that means that there is volume automation on this track. It's possible that the volume automation would work, but I usually like to redo it anyway, just to try and just cause with the new sounds that I put in it, it will probably need to be different anyway. Plus any uh, mastering plugins I, throw on it we'll change what it sounds like because I wasn't using those back in the day all right symbols this is a tricky one because there's a lot of different symbols and just calling it symbols is <laughs> it's gonna be hard to figure out uh, there's three main potentials I will start with the one that I think most likely and that's that it was east west I bought East West specifically for that. Um, even though it says symbols, this is just the name that I gave to the track. The patch itself uh, doesn't get saved with the MIDI file. Um, just because this is symbol and it matches up to that doesn't mean that this is the right patch. Uh, I'll give it a shot. It's usually pretty simple to know when it's the right one or not because, I mean, A, it'll sound right but be it it's also playing notes that are on the that are in the patch that sound right let's try this let's play the volume okay interesting let's see if some of these other parts make sense Yeah, it sounds like there's a hit and a kind of cymbal scrape. And you can see I'm kind of playing it on the different notes here. 
Oh, okay. Got lucky. And then another super awesome, helpful, productive Young Nelson uh, track naming right here. Metals. <sighs> okay, I think this one might be Contact Factory Library. These are the ones that are tough because the, the patch layout on the keyboard is going to be specific to whatever manufacturer made it and the time that it was made. Uh, VSL percussion. Hmm. It's possible it's a patch like that. Various percussion. All percussion? I don't know. It's possible it's not even metals. It's possible it was a legacy. Mallets and bells. Okay, so, so let's try from here. Hey, that looks reasonably possible. All right, let's put it on. Put her on there. Let's assign us to it's the first channel of the K6 percussion, and let's see if those notes trigger what sounds right. Nope. I'm guessing uh, this is a like a um, tambourine. Yeah, no. So it doesn't look right. Let's see if this was an MSI instrument. Percussions, long metal, shakers, tambourine, metal percussion. Let's see if that sounds right. Change this to trigger MSI channel one and go. Nope. Nope. Sometimes too, I, um, I will name the track something and record on that track and then decide and then change the sound <laughs> and not change the name of the track. So I'm kind of looking at the tambourine. It looks like tambourine shake and then the tambourine hit. So what if we try this one instead? New tambourine two, maybe. No, it's unlikely that it's one of these because usually the programming amongst, like in a library like uh, Motu Symphonic Instrument within this library, if it's the same instrument, they probably they probably would have had them mapped the same on the keyboard. So that takes us back to here. That's maybe um tambourines or something from here let's go back to percussion channel one Ooh, you guys hear that how about the roll down here is that where this is mapped no all right well Okay. Interesting. It's not metals though. We'll go with that until we figure it out. Yeah, very weird. I'm not sure that would be, I'm not sure that's right. For timpani, I used to use a patch on, oh, it's from in here, Timpits LR. So I'll load them so you can hear them. I have been replacing the sound a bunch. It's not bad. Uh, I just have patches that I uh, like a lot better these days. Yeah. So this is what we call artistic license. 
um, a timpanist in an orchestra, even a well-funded orchestra, might have four, maybe five, if there's a particular amazing piece that calls for it. Um, I decided early on in my uh, orchestral writing career to sort of ignore how many timpanies the timpanist has uh, because I do a lot of modulation through my pieces and if, if I just had to stick to one it would be uh, a pretty boring two minute loop if I was just in the same key the whole time. Well that looks like all of the tracks so how about we just listen to what it sounds like here. Maybe I'll do a quick pass at mixing. Harp starts first. Let's... And then all strings. This is definitely not the sound I used for for right there. That's one of the reasons why this violin patch is so hard to get away from. Um, I hadn't started recording at that point. It's the solo uh, violin from Asos Quantum Leap. And it just speaks so quickly. A lot of times it takes most violin patches a little bit longer the way that they program them. I have some insanely real sounding violin um, patches these days and I still for these parts, this is probably the best sound uh, to use there. Oh, I couldn't find the violin, tr hadn't found the violin tremolo yet. Um, I think it might be an MSI. Strings. I think that might be the one. Whoops, I replaced the other one. Try that again. Um, what did I just have there? Do I really need to go to the video I just recorded? Uh, no, how about I just go through these and look for the one that's assigned to UVI Workstation. UVI Workstation is the, the new home of MSI. If I didn't have a uh, UVI Workstation uh, has translators for the old Motu libraries. So I can't I can't see MSI in any one of these, which means that I probably started putting sounds in there and then uh, never finished. I guess that's the case. So we'll ignore this one and we'll just clear that part. And then let's put the violin tremolos on there. I think I'll remember if it sounds right. Um. I don't know that it much matters what tremolo is in there. Uh, I'm going to do, well, I've already got a string ensemble long notes for the all strings part. I'm going to put another instance in, which will let me have one of them. There, These are key switched. But this will let me have one for the long, it's just sustain notes, and then one for the tremolo. Let's put the, switch this to the tremolo part, and then you can just set it and forget it. Let's see if this works. Yep, yeah, way better. Yep, yeah, sounds great. 
Place this cello solo. Duh. Is this going out of the range, which would mean I have the wrong cello sound dialed up? Okay, keep going, keep mixing. We got all these right. Let's uh, check the flute out at the beginning. So that kind of slower, slower to speak, that could be a function of the, this was originally a east-west part and I switched it to the cine samples. Uh, so I might want to set the modulation wheel a little higher for that. now uh, same story with these they used to be east west now they're cine samples So I did draw in that uh, the sustain pedal changes. Oh, and I did do the some changes to the um, velocity on those notes. I think they might be poking out too hard. Do duck duck do. They're a little short because they would be shorter than the long notes, but I don't think they'd be as geeky. If you ever doubt how much, how uh, sticky your kind of high school years, <laughs> like what kind of, uh, how hard that can kind of grab you and how, you know, how long into the future you're still going to be using terminology from high school. There you go. Some of those are still a little short. I think that'll wash out a little bit. I, those last ones can be a little short. Let's hear it with the, f or hear the flute. And this is what you run into, changing sounds, is that sometimes, like on the other sound, uh, this probably didn't, this probably wasn't a big deal to have this note a little short. <laughs> Same thing. Might have copied and pasted. Okay. 
what we missed there. And by we, I mean me. Okay, so same thing. Let's see if we have did I do the sustain? Yeah, okay, I did. But the fact that they're because the um, velocity is dictating how <clears throat> the lower the vo velocity, the shorter those notes. Yeah. Da, da, da. I think they'd be pretty even. Da, da. I was recently reviewing the kind of main Wizard City theme and had to get really granular on editing the velocity of the notes and editing the sustain and making sure that it was right. I was going back and forth, making sure it all sounded good. Cause I'm, if it's a part that's really exposed, like a lot of stuff in wizard city was like, I had a lot of soloists. I had a lot of flute and clarinet and uh, bassoon solos and they're kind of right up front in the mix. And the more exposed the part is, the more you have to make sure that it sounds right. So there's some parts in there that are less than ideal, but let's listen to them in, in situ. The slap parts are notoriously sloppy, in case anybody's wondering. Let's add that contrabassoon in. that metal track right yeah i don't think that's right i'm pretty sure that's a how many tambourines does one person need percussion metals triangle it could be triangle too did we try the various metals i think we did As we move to the Just hearing a bunch of things that are wrong. I mean, sometimes it takes putting it all together and then going, that wasn't right. Let's try the Chilest from East to West instead of the one from Contact Factory. double time so this is all faster because I uh, pumped the tempo up here I bet you if I slowed it down again to I don't know 130 might make more sense Pretty fast. 
Recognize that. Some variations on that theme. Interesting. Listen to that contrabassoon cranking away down there. Let's add the trumpets in and try not to make them too loud. sounds and they are. are they the original sounds I definitely noticed that it's supposed to be changing back between short short and long so let's try the key switches A few key switches later. I think that this might have been orchestral brass classic. Who agrees with me? Let me know down below in the comments. Like and subscribe. Call to action. So let's switch to cinebrass trombones. I love these articulations. And then instead of <laughs> I'm gonna want da da da. So let's see if I can overdub how accurately I can overdub. I'm gonna ride the uh, modulation wheel too. What do you think? Did I do it? Last Pro Tools update kind of changed the way it used to pop the MIDI window and I kind of missed that behavior a little bit. Frankly, these guys, since they're not doing anything for us anymore, I'm gonna mute those just so they're not eating up any more MIDI notes. Um, no, 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 no. Just the trombones. And show me the sustain. Okay, so that's the sustain information that I just recorded. But these guys should be shorter and punchier, geekier, if you will. And then you have to also make sure that this is that the sustain pedal is going up between notes. some clicks and pops let me restart all right what was instantaneous for you was a tedious 30 seconds for me so that's gonna be that sounds great for the opening but of course there's all this other stuff we got to contend with So if the parts are just sustained, it usually sounds okay. 
just in those. And it's kind of a little cheat. If I don't see any uh, key switches, then don't really need to change the sustain mode any more than don't need to change the sustain mode. It's probably going to require a, a mod, mod wheel dynamics. This is a this is something I did a lot in I guess Wizard City and probably Marleybone, just kind of building those chords up amongst the sections. This is trombone start the trombones go do da and then trumpets finish that line. <laughs> Yep, need some mod wheel. Kind of dying down into there. Start that a little louder. And then this can pull back. I did a lot of uh, musical theater back when I was living in Toronto, kind of high school, college years, and that taught me a lot about what I want to hear from phrases, you know, and, and not just paying attention to the, the notes, but also to paying attention to how you're supposed to play them, how they all fit together. And it's kind of an invaluable experience for just having an opinion. <laughs> you know, it's like, I don't play trombone, I don't play flute, but it, I, I know what I want to hear out of those lines. Wow, that speaks late. Duh. And how about da 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 da. So this is really, that's really the short one. And there's only so much slop that I will tolerate here. Mm -mm -mm. Really missed that part, didn't I? Do da da da. Make sure there's a little later. Okay, how about probably a longer short note that's not quite as accented. Better. Maybe not perfect, but better. All right. Yeah, I need some support, doesn't it? How about uh, I'm going to ride the mod wheel here. So you can see what I recorded. Yeah, still starting kind of mezzo forte, but I want it to build. And then these uh, longer chords, I definitely want it to. Dun, uh, dun, uh. Mush balls. That's the violin solo that I thought would be. Oh, I think it's this part that's mushing it out. Hmm. Generally speaking, that attack is a little more consistent. Let's try some mod wheel, see if we can get that to speak better. Yep, 
Yeah, probably. Um, here with the violin solo part and those mass strings. <laughs> It's okay for now. It's both supposed to be a little quieter because I think the I think the woodwinds are taking yeah the woodwinds are playing there. doing clarinet might have to ride the mod wheel Sort of their features so that can come out a little more. I think I saw that part and decided that's all staccato. I don't need any legato there. Untrue. I'm not convinced this is the actual ending. All right, better. Whoa. Apologies to anybody listening on headphones in bed at night because I just woke you up um, I don't really have the brass and the percussion dialed in agreeing with the rest of the volume do I
sure about this anymore. You're afraid to hit those drums. So I usually use a Submaster bus here to plug in my uh, any mastering plugins. I use Ozone, and then I get these guys all feeding into that. Except that one. There we go. And then this guy's reverb. <laughs> Whenever I find myself mixing a little too loud, I'll turn my headphones up and that'll make me kind of shy away, away from the uh, faders a little bit. convinced on those symbols let's there we go I want to hear that oompa part there we go the tuba and the um, pizzicato part Always play nicely with each other there. Because the tuba down that low boom, boom, isn't speaking super loud. And the tubist is usually trying to control it. So it's not just plop, plop. So they're having the nice soft basses, boom, boom. Kind of the more bell tones on that, I think, really helps. <laughs> Didn't sound wrong, did it? Focus to that part. I will probably need to provide a little more, uh, a little more mixing to go in there. Um, I think that's going to do it. That's that was a long time. Uh, I hope it was interesting to somebody. But hopefully that gives you some insight into how 
Um, I'm kind of pulling this back. It's really just the sheet music and I've, I've really got to figure out what the sounds are going to be and how I need to sort of adapt it for newer, newer sounds. Um, there's actually, when the Wizard City kind of refresh happened, I provided uh, King's Isle with the MIDI data and then uh, a gentleman by the name of Chris Kozlowski, very talented composer in his own right, kind of remixed everything and sort of freshened up the sounds. And I think for the most part, he did a really good job. I've, I've been listening to his mixes, you know, much longer than my original mixes, I think. I'm sort of competing with him <laughs> to, to update my own sounds and freshen up the tunes from my perspective. Yep. So if you enjoyed this, leave a like. Just passed a thousand subscribers uh, recently. So thank you very much. See you next time.